walk down to the Capitol. And we're going to cheer on our brave senators and congressmen and women. And we're probably not going to be cheering so much for some of them. Because you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. How you guys doing today? Today, today, welcome back to my channel. Anyway, Tina Bibbs TV. Tina Bibbs TV. You are watching Tina Bibbs TV. Okay. Well, today, y'all, it's one day's celebrate Georgia for stepping up and everything. And, um, this video is kind of political because, um, yeah, it, it means a lot to me what's going on in the world. And um, so I do hope you enjoyed some of the clips I will be showing you as far as um, what's going on um, with this government of ours. And um, just relax and um, sit back and watch and learn. All right, be in from the state that is annexed to it a certificate from an authority of that state purporting to appoint or ascertain electors. Mr. Blunt. For what purpose does the gentleman from Virginia rise? What a moral dream prior, Mr. Vice President. In order to follow with the speaker's instructions that only a limited number of people be on the floor, May I ask how one would make an objection or make a parliamentary inquiry in the future if you're not on the floor but in the gallery? The title three of the United States Code, uh, debate is not permitted in the joint session. Um, the parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Vice President. I am not attempting to debate. I'm not attempting to debate. I'm trying to find out how a parliamentary inquiry or a parliamentary point of order would be made in following with the speaker's uh, request that most of us not be on the floor. How do you make one of those points of order when you don't know what's going to happen later? Uh, respectfully. Yes, sir. The gentleman's parliamentary inquiry constitutes debate, which is not permitted in the joint session under Section 18 of Title III United States Code. For that, Mr. Block. We're having technical difficulties. Mr. President, order in the chamber. Mr. President, the gentleman will continue. The certificate of the electoral vote of the state of Alabama seems to be regular in form and authentic, and it appears therefrom that Donald J. Trump of the state of Florida received nine votes for president, and Michael R. Pence of the state of Indiana received nine votes for vice president. Are there any objections to counting the certificate of vote of the state of Alabama? that the teller has verified appears to be... They ain't going to object, but uh, they're not going to object for Trump. <clears throat> Anything Biden to who they're going to try to object to. Hearing none. Craziness. This certificate from Alaska, the parliamentarians advise me, is the only certificate of vote from that state that purports to be a return from the state, and that has annexed to it a certificate from an authority of the state purporting...
to appoint and ascertain electors. Mr. President, the certificate of the electoral vote of the state of Alaska seems to be regular in form and authentic, and it appears therefrom that Donald J. Trump of the state of Florida received three votes for president, and Michael R. Pence of the state of Indiana received three votes for vice president. Are there any objections to counting the certificate of vote of the state of Alaska that the teller has verified? They are, they're not going to, they ain't going to object to anything for Trump. Hearing none, this certificate from Arizona, the parliamentarians advise me, is the only certificate of vote that the state purports to be a return from the state, and that has annexed to it a certificate from an authority of that state purporting to appoint or ascertain electors. Mr. President. The certificate of the electoral vote of the state of Arizona seems to be regular in form and authentic, and it appears therefrom that Joseph R. Biden Jr. of the state of Delaware received 11 votes for president, and Kamala D. Harris of the state of California received 11 votes for vice president. Let's see what's going to happen. Any objections to counting the certificate Watch. of vote? I'm, the I'm waiting on it. I'd be shocked if nobody say nothing. Authentic. Mr. Vice President, I, Paul Gosar from Arizona. For what Sports purpose does the gentleman from Arizona rise? I rise up for myself and 60 of my colleagues to object to the counting of the election. Told you. They ain't going to, um, everything will bite me. Is the objection in writing and signed by a senator? Yes, it is. Told you anything gonna be up for Biden. This is complete hot one. Presented in writing and signed by both a representative and a senator, complies with the law, Chapter One of Title Three of the United States Code. The clerk will report the objection. Anything Biden they can hold, that's what we're going to be uh, objecting. Objection to counting the electoral votes of the state of Arizona. We, a member of the House of Representatives and a United States Senator, object to the counting of the electoral votes of the state of Arizona on the ground that they were not, under all of the known circumstances, regularly given. That's Are there sad. further objections to the certificates from the state of Arizona? The chair hears none. The two houses will withdraw from joint session. Each house will deliberate separately on the pending objection and report its decision back to the joint session. The Senate will now retire to its chamber. Just from that one objection, I told you. That is so sad, y'all. That's so right, sad. So there you have it. Uh, the first objection, uh, they're going to be separated now. The senators will go back to the floor of the U.S. Senate. Uh, they will debate for two hours. Uh, they'll have a limited amount of speaking opportunities for all these various senators. John King, walk us through very quickly what's about to happen over the next two hours. So the joint session has broken up. So now you have the Senate will go to its chamber. The House will stay there in the House chamber. They have two hours. They have two hours in the process, and as they walk through it here, you saw what happened. Normally, this plays out pretty quickly. The counting process is the tellers report the votes, they go to the vice president, and if there's no controversy, this moves along very quickly. Because you had objections offered by a House member in writing, signed by a senator in writing, that meets the process, that meets the test. So now they go off into their separate chambers and they debate for up to two hours. A member of the House or a member of the Senate can speak for up to five minutes if they would like. And at the end of those two hours, the chair, the presiding officer in the Senate, presiding officer in the House, calls for a vote. They vote yay or nay, and then they come back and report it to the joint session. We know what's going to happen. 
The Senate will reject this, and the House will reject this, but it is an opportunity for the President's supporters to gum up the process, to make their objection, in this case, to Arizona, because they do the states in alphabetical order. You notice there was no specific cited there. They allege there were these irregularities and fraud in the state of Arizona. Again, we have a process for dealing with this. It's called the courts. The President's team tried. The President's supporters tried. And at every step, Wolf, they lost. But we know the end of the day... It's crazy they didn't have no Trump objections when he asked about Trump. Trump. Will be certified crazy, y'all. ...by this joint session. But this is allowed. Now they go off for two hours. They will debate Arizona. Then they will come back. Again, it will be rejected by both the House and the Senate. We'll see what the vote totals are, but it will clearly be rejected by both. And then they'll go back through the order. And we do know that when they get to the G's, there will be an objection about Georgia. When they get to the P's, there will be an objection about Pennsylvania. The Trump allies are debating, trying to decide if they have the support to do even more than that. But Arizona, Georgia, and Pennsylvania. So we will go through this at least three times today. Arizona first, because they do this in alphabetical order. Again, this is supposed to be an affirming ritual, an affirmation of the election. Instead, now we'll have two hours of debate in each chamber. Yeah, you know, Jake, uh, this is a uh, highly unusual. What's this they so childish. This, uh, debate two childish. hours in the Senate, two hours in the House. We know the end result; they will fail, but they're clearly simply trying to score some political points with the uh, president's supporters. That's right, and, and we should note uh, that this is not unprecedented. This has been done before. Uh, members of the House and one Democratic senator did this in January 2005 to protest. Uh, what they saw as irregularities in the state of Ohio, but the context here is quite different. Uh, back then, the losing candidate, Democratic Senator John Kerry, uh, distanced himself from the process and distanced himself uh, from the objection. Uh, what we have here is this comes in the context of a two-month-long process by President Trump and his allies to actually try to undermine and the results of the election and stage what is essentially uh, a bloodless coup. I want to bring back the former Senate parliamentarian, uh, Alan Fruman. Uh, Alan, um, what would have to happen for this to work? Encouraged his loyal base to fight to overturn the result of this bitterly contested election. We're going to walk down to the Capitol and we're going to cheer on our brave senators and congressmen and women, and we're probably not going to be cheering so much for some of them. Because you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. Many of his supporters needing little encouragement to join the fight. We're here to support, you know, if. if Violence happens like it happens, but we're not going to start it. You know, we're just like here to defend ourselves. With blood. Yeah. Sorry, say that again. I'm a Mexican immigrant. I support Trump. Freedom is paid for with blood, and tyranny always masquerades itself as safety and security, and that's what we're fighting against right now. Outside the Capitol, the outer ring of security had been breached. The crowds had taken Donald Trump at his word, and they were taking the fight to the heart of American democracy. <laughs> They were literally banging on the doors of Congress. This way! This way! And then some Trump supporters managed to get inside. They were armed and wandering the Capitol building. There were tense and violent scenes with police who'll have never dealt with anything like this. These pictures appear to show a woman protester being shot inside the Capitol building. A stretcher was sent in. She was later given CPR. A protester breached the inner sanctum of the chamber. The vice president had to be removed to safety by his secret service detail. And then the joint session was adjourned. Earlier, the Republican Senate leader, for so long a loyal lieutenant of the president, turned on him with this withering assessment. This election were overturned by mere allegations from the losing side our democracy would enter a death spiral. We'd never see the whole nation accept an election again. Every four years would be a scramble for power at any cost. And the vice president, who's officiating over this joint session and has shown Donald Trump near slavish loyalty, also said it was not his role to overturn the verdict of the people.
my oath to support and defend the Constitution constrains me from claiming unilateral authority to decide which electoral votes should be counted. And he went on, the presidency belongs to the people and to them alone. And the president-elect has gone on television to warn that American democracy is under unprecedented assault, and he made this appeal. I call on President Trump to go on national television now to fulfill his oath and defend the Constitution and demand an end to this siege, to storm the Capitol, to smash windows, to occupy offices, the floor of the United States Senate rummaging through desks, on the Capitol, on the House of Representatives, threatening the safety of duly elected officials. It's not protest. It's insurrection. Donald Trump has spoken. He called on his supporters to stand down. But condemnation? There was none. This was a fraudulent election. But we can't play into the hands of these people. We have to have peace. So go home. We love you. You're very special. The chamber has emptied, democracy put on hold. Outside, they were scaling the ramparts, the mob for the moment in charge, believing they have the right to overthrow the will of the people. Tonight, the shining city on the hill, as America likes to describe itself, feels as though the light of democracy is flickering dangerously. John Sopel, BBC News, Washington. John's report there, we'll be talking to him in a short while, but these are the images now in Washington, D.C. tonight. The president's message has been delivered. He's told people to go home. Some people have, but as we can see, there are plenty of people still around uh, the Capitol Hill, uh, still wanting to make their protests heard, still wanting to urge members of Congress not to ratify the election result. That's despite, by the way, uh, Republican leaders on Capitol Hill saying that this... Now, isn't that sad of what's going on in this world? Like, this government, like, whoa, Mr. Trump is mad mad. <laughs> He's real mad. Excuse my um, bonnet from the Smith family, or the Smith bunch, rather. But anyway, yeah, he's real mad mad, so um, let's pray for this world, because you know it's going crazy. I mean, he literally basically told him to go down there and march. What? But anyway, y'all, um, yeah, now to end this video. If you feel like you're going through something and you feel like you're the only one going through it, now look at what's going on in the world right now, right here in the United States, right there at the uh, Capitol Hill. Right on Capitol Hill, it's a lot of mess. So, love and be loved. Well, know that you, somebody else will go through somewhere worse. Like I said, look what's going on. So love and be loved, do the right things for the right reason, and be kind on purpose, y'all. And know that Tina Bed TV loves with all her heart. Excuse how I'm looking, I'm at home. Yeah. Quarantining. <laughs>